and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to clone a remote repository to our local machine, which allows us to then be able to work against the local version of the code and ultimately push that version back up to GitHub when we're ready to commit our changes out at the remote. So we'll go through the whole process locally first, and then we'll get it out to GitHub eventually in a future video. But first, to do that, we need to clone it. Now, it is important to remember that we only clone a repository one time. After that, we don't want to clone it anymore. And so you can think of it like buying a car. If you go out and you buy a car, you don't have to buy the car again and again and again. Once you've bought the car, it's yours, it's in your possession. Now you may need to take it back to the dealer and get some updates to that car, or even get some new parts and put them in the car, and however that would work. It's very similar when we do changes to our repository. We still have the same car. We already bought the car, but now we're gonna do some changes on it. So we'll do the rest of the work in a future video, but for this video, all we're gonna do is get it locally and validate that it's all set up and ready to go. So you need a working repo out of GitHub. We're gonna use the same one that I had used earlier in a video. And so git first repository is just the name of this one. It's just a junk repository to do some demonstrations in. But you can imagine this is your actual code repository. So you go, you find the GitHub URL to copy it to your clipboard, which you can get from the code dropdown. You'll note that it's the same as your URL at the top here, which is just github.com Boba Fett git first repository. So basically github.com, the name of your account, and then the name of the repository. But it's all right here github.com, the name of your account, and the name of your repository. So you copy that. There's a couple of different ways that you can clone. So the easiest way to clone a repository is just to open a git bash terminal. So you want to be in the directory where you're going to store all your projects. So you'll have multiple projects here, but you want to make sure that you're not seeing any kind of repository notation here, meaning you're not inside a repository. If you're inside a repository and you clone something into it, that's gonna be a really bad deal. So make sure you're not in a repository. And then just type in git clone and the link to the repo. And we'll paste it in there. Now it'll bring it in. And if I'm not logged in, and this is a private repository, it will require that I log in. So the first time you log in, you have to sign in. And on a Windows machine, I can do that with my browser. So I'll just sign in with the browser here. And it'll say my authentication succeeded. And that will allow me to complete the clone operation. If I run an ls command then, we'll see there's my git first repository. If I change directory to the git first repository, and let's clear this up, you'll see that I am on that git first repository and I am seeing that I'm on the main branch. And if I go back a level, no main branch, if I come in a level to the git first repository, I'm on the branch. If I do an ls-al command, which you need to be in a bash terminal to do this, you can't do this on a PowerShell terminal, uh, it will show that I have a .git folder. Just to really quickly show this, if I was on PowerShell, I tried to do an ls-al command here, it would say I don't know what that means. This It does let me do an ls, but it does not let me do an ls-al. So the problem here with a PowerShell is we don't see the .git, so we don't necessarily know where to get. Also, I don't have posh git installed, which is another git terminal thing that you can do if you want to use PowerShell. Uh, so I don't know what branch I'm on at all or anything like that. If I do do a dir and print this out, I still don't see my .git folder, uh, most likely because it's kind of a hidden folder. But if we do a new command, if we do ls-force, it will show the .git folder that's hidden there. But really that just shows I have the git folder there. And if we look at the folder, we can see that in that repository, I, I do have the git folder. If you don't see that, you gotta go to the view, show hidden items. And once you do that, you should see the .git folder. And inside the .git folder, we have all of the information that is important to the local version of the repository, including where it tracks things to the remote repository. So most of us will just leave this folder completely alone for 99.9% .9 of what we do. So we're not gonna worry about what's all in there right now, just know that that proves I'm in a git repository at this level as well, as having the ability to do a git status, which shows I'm up to date with origin main, do a git log, which shows that I have the initial commit by Boba, and ultimately all that's good to go. So the last thing I wanna do is just validate that I am tracking to the remote, which I already know that I am, but by default, my branch 
will already be tracking because I cloned from GitHub. Later we'll have to learn how to do this manually to set it up ourselves. But for this video, everything's taken care of. But I just want to introduce the command real quick. Git remote dash double victor, double V or dash VV, which shows that at origin, I have my link to my repository for both fetch and push. So we should see that. If we don't see that, that means we're not tracking to the remote. We will see later in another video where we have to set that manually. But for this one, that's all we needed to do. And so at this point, we've completed all the work that we need to do to clone a repository locally. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.